Hello. Recently, the United States Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs conducted a hearing entitled Examining the Fintech Landscape. They covered a variety of topics such as jobs, credit scores, the underbanked and unbanked populations. Here is an excerpt on credit scores. Thank you, Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, gentlemen. This is an important discussion we're having, so appreciate uh, your comments um, today. Uh, Mr. Pasquale, let me, let me start with you because uh, Chairman Crapo had asked you, all of you, what the risks are, and one of the things that you talked about was the opaque algorithms to assess credit, um, and that was one of my questions. Can you elaborate on that a little bit, please? Sure. So one of the big problems in the U.S. Uh, credit industry is that there are lots of people who either have no file or a thin file, and so they are very hard to for a bank to extend a credit to because it, it's seen as them not having adequate, we don't have adequate background information on them. And so the answer from a, a lot of fintech firms is to say, well, why don't we look at other sources of data? And there was a, a think tank thing called Upturn that just divided these into traditional, alternative, and fringe sources of data. So alternative data could be like your utility bill or rent bill, how often you pay your rent, etc. That's That seems pretty legitimate to me. But some of the fringe data could be things like, how do you fill out a form online? Did you look at it for too long? Um, in India, there's reports of lenders saying if they see political activity on someone's Twitter account, they say, oh, wow, well, maybe we shouldn't lend to them. Maybe they're getting mixed up in things that we don't want to be involved in. And sometimes even the contents of someone's smartphone, like the deal might be offered, just let us download everything on your smartphone, maybe we'll give you a loan. And I think that this sort of, uh, these sort of business models could lead to what I call big data proxies. So the problem is that they, the companies involved may not necessarily be looking to intentionally discriminate against individuals, but as we know from ACOA, that's not the touchstone of liability there. The really key issue is, could you use that sort of data, like locational, other aspects of data, to discriminate against people? And a final version of this could be that, for example, you might have very sophisticated algorithms that could, from someone's face, say, tell their age or tell different medical conditions from them. Um, this sort of face recognition software is already being used, say, to infer criminality from faces. <laughs> so these, the, the level of advances in AI means that there's so many different data sources, and the opacity of these is really a challenge to fair lending. And thank you. And I, I know you've read, uh, uh, written extensively on data brokers, and I think that's important. I think it's important um, for all of us to understand there is so much data out there and the concern when, we, when it comes to credit or how we determine somebody's credit worthiness, if we're going to take all of that data into consideration, might at times create some sort of bias un unintentionally because of the data we're collecting. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, and I think uh, Federal Trade Commissioner Edith Ramirez was a real intellectual leader here in terms of pointing this out as an issue, getting the FTC to write some good reports on it, and the uh, White House Big Data Report from last year. Yeah. Okay. My screen's going to come up on your screen in just a little bit, but there's no question there are a variety of credit scores, traditional scores, alternative scores, and fringe scores, and it's important to have an understanding of the variety of scores. We will go through some of the scores that are really interesting and examine which of these scores are available to you and which of these scores are not available to you. Of course, you can access your traditional credit scores, but there are a variety of marketing scores that may not be available to you. And some of these credit scores you can access rather easily and others that you might have to actually go through certain hoops. For example, what about your tenant score? How can you access your tenant score? You would have to go to the CoreLogic website and get some information on the tenant score that you might have. Traditional scores, of course, use baseline data, such as credit history and so on. And alternative scores use alternative data, such as rent payments, frequency of rent payments, and so on. But there are a variety of fringe scores that are based on marketing models and a variety of other behaviors. And so it's important to have an understanding of these scores. There's no question. Allowing your bank to download all the information that's available on your cell phone and giving them the permission to evaluate that data to qualify you for a loan might be useful. Of course, they can look at all your contacts and see 
what sort of information is available. They could look at your location history, see where you've been in the last month, let's say. That can be very fascinating. The World Privacy Forum estimates that there are around 4,000 data brokers. And as you can see from the screen, there is a wealth of data that's collected from websites you might visit, from your purchases, and so on. The World Privacy Forum has put together a report, and I would strongly encourage you to read that report in its entirety. And that will give you a complete sense of the amount of information that's available about you, but not to you. As you can see, your traditional score would be your FICO score, your alternative score would be your Vantage score, and your Friend score would be your Zest Finance score. It's important to have some understanding of how these scores are being calculated and making sure that you're able to make sure that payments are made on time and that the data is reported correctly so that these scores are not distorted in any way. Now what about the plethora of scores? There are of course a variety of scores. And depending on your lifestyle and your behavioral attributes, PRISM compiles a score on individuals in various areas. And you can think of that as a fashion score or some other type of score, but you certainly want to be familiar with the scores that PRISM calculates. As to the plethora of consumer scores, let's start with your FICO score. Your FICO score is obviously available to you, and you can get an annual credit report and get your score, but you can also get an auto insurance score. And your auto insurance score will typically be calculated from your credit score as one of the inputs. And so you may see a very close correlation between your credit score and your auto insurance score. Of course, there are a variety of health scores and frailty scores and so on, and that's important information. If you've rented property, you're likely to have a tenant score. And it's important to know what your tenant score is as well. And you can go to CoreLogic, the website, and they will provide you with a form that you would need to fill out and get your tenant score. If you are a charitable donor, you likely will have a donor score. And if you work for a not-for-profit organization, you certainly want to look at what donor score is available before your next charitable campaign. And then target your campaign to those donors, and that might make the campaign more effective. I'm sure all of you fly. And you may be interested in the Automated Targeting System score that's calculated by the Department of Homeland Security. This score is not available to the public, but DHS certainly shares those score with the airlines. But it certainly would be insightful to know how the score is calculated and have access to the score if possible. There is also an AIQ Green score to determine how environmentally friendly you might be. And so some of you may be interested in that score as well. The IRS uses the Discriminant Function System score to determine whether to audit you or not. And it would be useful to have an understanding of how that score is calculated as well, as you might imagine. There's also the Casino Gaming Propensity score that might be useful to casino managers. And there's a Cloud score and it might be useful to know how these scores are calculated. There's also the Pregnancy Predictor Score calculated by Target and Target uses a list of items to determine that score. Those items are items that pregnant women would buy. And so that's a list of some of the scores. We've just gotten through a short list. You want to review the report by the World Privacy Forum to have a complete understanding of all of these scores. There are a variety of scores that we have not discussed in this segment. We could spend hours and hours on these scores, but when you get a chance, you want to review the report by the World Privacy Forum 
and have a full understanding of consumer scores. This is the end of this segment and I would strongly encourage you to review the report by the World Privacy Forum.